The National Preservation Institute and Advanced Marine Enterprises are pleased to demonstrate advanced computer simulation and visualization technology applied to cultural resources documentation. The project was sponsored by the National Center for Preservation Technology and Training, National Park Service, through a research grant to the National Preservation Institute. It was performed jointly by Mr. James C. Massey and Mr. Otto P. Johns. It does not necessarily represent the official position or policies of the sponsor. The term Advanced Computer Simulation and Visualization Technologies in the title of the grant refers to state-of-the-art computer-based information technology at large and specifically to the digital technologies shown here. The subject chosen for the demonstration, the USS Monitor, is one of the most recognizable warships ever built, and her battle with the CSS Virginia, formerly the USS Merrimack, is one of the most famous of the Civil War, as depicted here in a painting by Carl Evers provided courtesy of the Monitor National Marine Sanctuary. The project objectives and associated tasks are as follows. First, the Monitor will be recreated in the computer as a three-dimensional geometrically correct model. Her hydrodynamic behavior will be determined and she will be launched and operated in a realistic entirely computer generated, that is, virtual ocean. Secondly, the turret lifting and rotation mechanism will be built piece by piece. It will be set in motion to demonstrate operation and to analyze structural loads during operation. The third task is to document the results of the project in a form suitable for easy dissemination to the public, such as CD-ROM or videotape. The recreation of the monitor started with review of available historic documentation drawings and bills of material provided dimensions, arrangement details, material and component specifications, and other information required to maintain the engineering accuracy of the model. Other records such as diaries, letters, and eyewitness accounts provided insight which aided in making reasonable engineering judgments when necessary. An accurate wireframe model of the exterior hull, turret, and appendages was created. The visualization model, an accurate replication of the monitor's geometric and visual characteristics, was completed by adding realistic textures to the wireframe. Before the monitor could be launched, her precise hydrodynamic behavior had to be defined and those characteristics assigned to the visualization model. Launching also required the development of a virtual ocean, which is a graphic representation of a set of complex computer instructions defining the interaction of waves, land masses, wind, and weather. Finally, launched again, the monitor sails here along a coastline in relatively calm water. She responds to both the helmsman and natural forces according to the laws of physics. The technology demonstrated here is very mature. It has been used successfully for years to train aircraft pilots in flight simulators and ship operators in bridge simulators. The observer can take any desired position, from a seagull's view, on the deck looking astern, on the deck looking ahead. Note that even in this very low sea state, Waves wash over her bow due to her low freeboard. Wave height in this scene averaged no more than two feet. It should therefore not come as a surprise that she did not survive an open water transit. Operations during the day, at night, or during twilight, and instantaneous changes in environmental conditions such as fog, shown here, rain, wind, and sea state magnitude and direction can easily be shown. In the following, the monitor's turret lifting and rotating machinery were modeled and sent into motion to illustrate and analyze operation. Models were created on Intergraph computer systems running EMS and VDS as well as Adobe Photoshop software. 
Motion and analyses were accomplished using the Adams Mechanical Systems simulation software. We chose this example because it is usually very difficult to look at an original drawing of a complex piece of machinery and visualize exactly how it operates. Visualization and simulation technology, as we will show in the following sequence, can convey such concepts very effectively in just a few seconds. The main transverse bulkhead was the primary foundation for the turret and is a good starting point for reconstructing the turret lifting and rotating mechanism. On the forward side of the main transverse bulkhead, a wedge was positioned to raise the turret shaft by rotating a large nut on the threaded rod. Accounts indicate it was a lengthy and difficult task to turn the hex head nut to lift the turret clear of the machined brass deck ring sufficiently to rotate the turret which was estimated to weigh 120 tons, less guns and ordnance. The ship's designer, John Erickson, countered this problem by putting turnbuckles in the diagonal braces of the turret structure to enable lifting the turret off the brass deck ring without raising the turret shaft. A large spur gear, approximately six and one half feet in diameter, located on the forward side of the main transverse bulkhead, was keyed into the turret shaft. The remainder of the gearing was located on the after side of the main transverse bulkhead and included a smaller spur gear and pinion gear on the same shaft and a drive pinion gear. Steam from the boilers in the engine room was piped forward to power two single piston steam engines whose piston shafts were connected to a crank. As the crank revolved in either direction, the drive pinion gear engaged the small spur gear, which, in turn, rotated the pinion gear, which engaged the large spur gear and ultimately rotated the turret. The mechanism was capable of rotating the turret up to two and one half revolutions per minute. Now, instead of just looking at how the turret is rotated, let's go further. We can model any mechanical component of the system and analyze the forces, stresses, and strains the component sees. We've chosen a simple example to illustrate this capability. We'll use Adams software to calculate the forces in the steam engine connecting rods as the system starts and then transitions to steady state operation. Adams stands for Advanced Dynamic Analysis of Mechanical Systems. This graphic shows the model used to calculate forces in the connecting rods. Some of the data required to perform the analysis was obtained from historical records. Other data was estimated. For example, the gear masses were based on volume calculations and material density estimates. Lacking any meaningful joint lubrication information, frictionless joints were assumed. Adams calculates and graphically displays in real time the forces in each connecting rod between the time steam is admitted to the steam engines and the time the turret reaches maximum rotational speed. Returning to construction of the turret, we see the turret shaft connected to the turret main beam through a clutch. Turret construction continues with the addition of diagonal braces, turnbuckles, stanchions, and decking. The turret main beam supported the turret deck and provided a foundation to connect the turret stanchions and diagonal braces. As indicated earlier, the turnbuckles and the diagonal braces were added to allow the turret to be lifted clear of the brass deck ring without having to lift the turret shaft with the wedge. Turret construction is completed with the addition of overhead structure, decking, and armor. The turret armor consisted of one inch thick iron plates press bent and fitted in courses totaling eight inches in thickness. Fully outfitted, the turret housed two 11-inch Dahlgren cannons mounted on slides. Ready racks around the perimeter of the turret stowed 11-inch diameter shot, each weighing approximately 180 pounds. Based on the preceding project results, the study objective has been met. It leads us to an important conclusion. If computer simulation and visualization technologies are used for purposes of cultural resource documentation, the potential for historic reconstruction inherently exists because these very technologies are the foundations for virtual prototyping, 
or rapidly maturing technology. Specifically, virtual prototyping involves the development and operation of a system or product which does not yet exist in hardware, entirely in a computer-based or virtual environment. The Boeing company, to give just one example, used this technology very successfully in their latest program, the 777. This aircraft was flown before it was built. Virtual reconstruction involves the redevelopment entirely in a virtual environment of a system or product which no longer exists. Once reconstructed, today's technology permits it to not only be visualized, but operated as well. The virtual monitor can sail again while her hardware twin is still resting in her watery grave. In doing this, we must, however, make sure that these four important conditions are met. Objects must be modeled correctly as far as dimensions and space are concerned. They must behave in accordance with the laws of physics. They should appear realistic to the human eye. And, for operations, they must respond in real time. In summary, the ability to not only document but reconstruct a national historic treasure has been demonstrated, albeit in a virtual environment. With some further work, we can get a much better sense of how her design and operating characteristics influence the tactical decisions made by her officers. We can walk through her cramped spaces, operate her machinery, and maybe even take her into battle again. We would like to thank Mr. Kevin Foster, Chief Maritime Historian of the National Park Service, for his assistance, guidance, and support throughout the course of this work. Mr. John Broadwater and his staff from the Monitor National Marine Sanctuary were most helpful. Finally, AME's staff members and Mr. Fred Robinette deserve formal recognition for their tireless efforts.